Here's a question for you. What do Conway Twitty, Leon Russell, and the Jackson 5 have in common? The answer? They all used amplification products from a company that was based in Chanute, Kansas. In our first story, we learn about the history of that company. It's a story of entrepreneurship and innovation. Learjets, transistors, rock and roll, and Naugahyde. Lots of Naugahyde. This is the story of the custom amplifier company that became a major player in the world of electronics out of the small town of Chanute, Kansas. But the story doesn't start there. Bud Ross, the founder of Custom, lived in the Kansas City area and actually created his business in his garage. Bud was a musician and at the age of 18 was in a band called Larry Emmett and the Sliders. With a first-hand experience at using guitar amplifiers, he had ideas on how to create a better system. He looked for someone to help him in the project and visited a company called ARF Products in Raton, New Mexico, where he pitched his idea of building amplifiers. Instead of building amps, they started him out as a traveling salesman to sell automatic garage door openers. So I traveled uh, for about six months uh, selling the automatic garage door openers. And I was in California, Oakland, California, and I called in an order. Problems at the manufacturing firm kept them from delivering the order that Bud had just sold. Discouraged, he asked the boss if he'd considered Bud's idea of building guitar amplifiers. I said, by the way, how are we coming along on uh, the idea of the amplifier? Bud, he said, uh, we just haven't had time to get to it with all these other problems. And I said, consider this my resignation because I'd like to make amplifiers. And he said, well, you don't know the difference between a resistor and a capacitor. And I said, I know, but I'll find out. And find out he did. One of the things that he had picked up during his short time in garage door opener sales was how the electronics industry was evolving from hot vacuum tubes to solid state transistors. Bud wanted to capitalize on that, and with a loan from his father for $1,000, he started his business. With that $1,000, I rented a house in Overland Park and started making uh, amplifiers in the garage. We made three of them. Well, Conway Twitty happened to come through town in April, and I showed him what I was doing, and he bought two of the three. I took them to Lexington, Kentucky. He played that night at a place called The Palms. Within less than an hour, all three amplifiers quit. <laughs> so. I gave him a check back and uh, he loaned me $50 to get back to Kansas City. Bud would later have Conway as a client and a lifelong friend once he resolved his early stumbles in the amplifier business. Bud also needed a company name and a logo for his product. The name Custom would be good because I used to uh, customize automobile. Well, we customized our amplifiers. I was in Overland Park and I went down to Kansas City, Missouri at the McGee Radio to buy some speakers. And I looked across the street and there was a sign company called Arts Sign. Bud asked the proprietor to make him a logo for his company, spelled with a K. Bud left the sign maker to do his work and returned 30 minutes later and uh, he had it all sketched out. He charged me $3.50. <laughs> and that's the logo I used all those years. Bud's former wife, Carolyn, recalls those early days as Bud was experimenting with not only the solid state insides, but the tuck and roll naugahyde exteriors of the cabinets. We started in our garage and Bud had an old sewing machine and he would try the sewing. It took a while to get it all down pat. And one time we had a gold fabric and he had marked where the pleats go. And so when he rolled it up, the ink came off on the gold on the, the good side. And so when he sewed it, the ink showed. So there was just all sorts of, of things that he had to keep getting until he got it right. He just kept working on it. To grow his company further, Bud had learned that the town of Chanute, Kansas, was looking for industries to relocate to their community. He contacted officials there and found help in financing his fledgling enterprise. The time that Custom came to Chanute in the mid-60s, um, our economy here was not very good, so it was uh, a very good opportunity for Chanute to extend business opportunities to Mr. Ross and allow people here in Chanute to work in the plant. The bank loaned me uh, $16,000 
and then the uh, industrial committee there in Chanute loaned me 3000 And we went into an old grocery store that had four apartments above it, and we lived in the apartments above and started manufacturing amplifiers below. The lady had just closed the grocery store. In fact, when I went down, the shelves were still there and there was even bread still on some of the shelves. We just scooted them off to one side and started working. When they would try out everything, the dishes in my china cabinet would rattle and I was afraid they were gonna fall. I was in that uh, building for two and a half years. Within uh, nine months, from the time I went to Chanute, we were netting over $10,000 a month. And then we built a new building out in the industrial park. And from that point, the business took off. Bud himself took off as a millionaire in his 20s. So successful, in fact, that the company bought a Learjet for his travels to sell the product. Media at the time featured articles of his rags to riches story, and his product continued to gain popularity. I think they saw it and they liked it. We had a very good record of no failure. After my failures I had in the beginning, that became, and that just was, that was it. I mean, we had the most solid, uh, reliable, recognized as the number one amplifier in America. The reputation of the product was promoted further through a clever marketing gimmick. Carolyn created a sideline business making toy dolls called Custom Cats out of repurposed scraps of the Naga hide used on the amplifier's exteriors. So she set up a little factory and had three ladies working for her. So I sold to music stores and uh, toy stores and just around and then um, I started running out of scrap material. So I'd have to go over to the back door of Custom <laughs> and borrow some fabric. And that didn't work out too well because they'd had theirs already set for where it was going. But we had, we had a very good uh, relationship with the employees and, you know, had, uh, had a lot of fun. Also Bonnie Reno worked in the factory assembling amplifiers. Totally. I've worked in electronics 44 and a half years. If it hadn't been for Bud, it would not have been. It was a fun job. I loved to go to work. And it was something when the different bands, the different groups come through. One afternoon, I looked out my window and a big bus drove up. I looked out the window and there come little Jimmy Dickens walking off of the bus with his big old guitar, bigger than him. <laughs> we saw many performers that we'd never see other than that. At the new building, sales continued to win like the four million to six to eight and 10. And yeah, it just kept going up. Uh, the monies, I invest in other companies, and looking back, it was a real mistake. I sold my interest in 1975, and I ended up filing bankruptcy. But the story doesn't end there for Bud. He works his way back to success through many other innovations in the years following Custom. These days, there are collectors of Custom amps, and Carolyn travels to their gatherings to show off photos and other memorabilia from the factory. Interest in the amps is so keen that this room full of equipment was assembled by the collectors just for our Sunflower Journey story. And some popular musicians, like Cheryl Crow, use the equipment on stage today. The legacy of custom will be the quality of the products that were produced here in Chanute. Bed and I are still doing projects together and going different places together. And, and I'm proud of Bud. He did a very good job. Make a commitment, don't give up. Just go for it and don't give up. <laughs>